All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Grow From A Network. And today we're going to talk about how to create a living ground cover. Ground cover is something around trees that can get a little bit tricky because you would rather either mulch it with some kind of hardwood mulch or you would rather leave it as clean as possible underneath the tree. Most guys are going to tell you to do that. We've been experimenting with the comfrey ground cover and the crimson clover. And what we're seeing is basically just the way we thought it out, just the way um, a lot of the research has actually uh, helped us implement. We're not really worried about the plant actually sucking nutrients from the tree, specifically with the comfrey, because its roots go so deep into the ground. Um, we have dug them up in the past to kind of look at that long tap root. And for some reason, it doesn't actually interfere with the tree itself. So I'll show you this if you come closer. You can see this comfrey plant. This is multiple comfrey, comfrey plants. And it's actually overtaken a little small. Look at those bees in there. It's overtaken this little small mulberry tree that we just planted. But look how healthy the mulberry is looking. So you can tell if it was taking nutrients away, it would actually stay. I mean, it was like this small when we first planted. So you can see all the new growth. All of this is new growth here. The good thing about a, a ground cover is that, number one, the bees love it. So if you had a mulch down, you would not be feeding your ecosystem because you would just have mulch. Um, also, living ground covers are beautiful. And as opposed to, yes, mulching is nice and it's clean, but that's all it offers. It offers a mulch. It actually feeds the ground. It feeds the, the worms underneath as it breaks down. But the good thing about if you look at a ground cover, it does the same thing. A living ground cover actually does the same thing as a mulch, but actually it, it adds that added layer of feeding the bees and helping the bees get that pollen. But as you can see in here, if you look in, all of this eventually will die down. These die and you can see all of the dead material and it does the same thing as the mulch. It actually feeds in, but it also blocks out as your mulch uh, dies back. You would eventually have to add more mulch, add more mulch, and then you would get weeds actually competing again. But as you can see with the comfrey, once the comfrey dies back, it's going to die back over the grass and it's going to it's going to keep competing with that grass, stopping that grass from retaking over. So you can see in here as this comfrey dies back, it's dying back onto the ground. If it wasn't, you can see some weeds coming in, but it's going to kill that. It's going to kill it out. You can see all of these weeds are like at bay. And as we start to get some more comfrey to drop here, as these seeds drop and you'll get more comfrey to come up and eventually it'll shade out that whole area and it'll kind of start to look something like this area where you see it's just comfrey all over. You can get some uh, plants to come in, but this is real easy to take out. You can see how healthy this weed looks. It looks, it doesn't look this healthy nowhere else on the property, but because it's under here, you can, well, it's not really a, okay, it's a weed, but it's actually a medicinal weed. But you can see how healthy and how vibrant this is just being here. And I, I know the name of it, but I just can't think of it right now. So I know you can, my neighbor used to like to, man, save those for me. Let me, let me dry them. So uh, I think it's like amaranth, something like that. But as you can see, it provides another thing it provides is multiple, multiple, multiple chances of reproduction. Where every time this comfrey plant drops seeds, you have a chance for another plant as opposed to wood chip drop those kind of companies once they come maybe one time, drop your wood chips. You got to find them again. You got to call them again. You got to beg for them again. As opposed to this, once you set up a system like this in place, you're not, you don't have to call this comfrey plant and say, hey, I need some more seeds or I need some more plants. 
as these plants die back, more plants will come up. Let me show you here. You can see here. Now we lost a citrus tree here, but what I did was I just went ahead on and stuck another mulberry in because the it's ripe. The situation is ripe. The comfrey is growing good. And like I say, you're going to get on the outsides of your ground cover, you're going to get these kind of weeds to kind of encroach, but they're, they're not many and they're easier to take out. You can see that they're easier to take out. And if you want, really, you can take that and just throw it back on there because that's those weeds are beneficial as well. We got some more spots you can see over here and we're implementing them just slowly, slowly implementing what we want, how we want them. Um, sometimes we get a little lazy and we don't get them all. But you can see here, these are at least this might be 50 comfrey plants. And what you can do is come out here. And I don't have a little shovel. But you can see this is one plant out here, maybe even two. And, and basically, you can come right here and dig this plant up. Let's see, it rains. So let me see if I can pull this plant out. <laughs> well, almost. Let me see. Got some more. Yeah, I got it. So the root is actually in here. I broke the limbs off, but the root is still here. You can actually take this. Let's take this off. Take this by another tree. Take this root. Look at that long tap root that we're talking about. It sends these huge tap roots. And you can take them. I'm not going to do it right now, but you can take these roots and you can just plant them anywhere, anywhere that you want them to kind of stay. And, and that way they'll start to take over that area. You can see here we've started with them here. Same idea. Once you put one or two down, they just keep coming up more and more. And we've also started here near to near the pear tree. You can put it close. You can put it far away. It's up to you. They're not going to kill the tree. You can see here we're trying to kind of move it a little bit away from the stalk. But you get the same idea and you can do the same thing as these grow. If you want to move these away from this plant, you just go in here and pull them out. Pull them out close to your tree if that's what you want to do. But you don't have to do it because from my experience, as you can see, it doesn't take away from the tree. They're not competing with the tree. They're actually feeding the tree. If they are competing with the tree, whatever they're taking away from the root system, by sheer mass of biomass and, and nutrients, they're putting that back every time they die down into the soil. They're actually putting that back into the ground. And so if you want to know how to create such a ground cover, it's real easy. Find you some comfrey seeds. They come up like crazy. You put them down. Um, I think we started off with 25 comfrey seeds. And I think we got a bad batch when we first started because we kind of complained. Only about three, three or four came up. But off of those three or four comfrey plants some four years ago, now you just see as much comfrey as you want to have. Um, you can have. Now, I'm in Louisiana. I don't know about like way up north, how cold hardy they are, but I do know here you set them and forget them. If they die back, they're going to come back and they're going to reseed and die back. So it becomes a perennial here in zone, I'm going to say 8B, 9A, and, and it's beautiful here. So you make the choice whether you want a, a dead mulching type of ground cover where if you want some color, you can actually uh, buy that colored mulch. I don't really recommend it. But here you can get the beauty of these deep, dark purples. It's beautiful colors. And I think the bees would love it. Your ecosystem would love it as well. So give it a try. This is just a little video, real short video on, on some of the benefits and some of the things that, that comfrey can do for you, right? It's beautiful. Um, it's weed preventing. It, it feeds the soil. It's shading. It shades the ground um, from the heat. It shades the plant. You can see here the trunk of the plant is actually shaded from that severe heat. Even there, even by, by, the, by the peach, you can see 
how as they grow bigger, they're, they're doing a shading effect and that keeps you from having to buy that paint and painting your, um, your, your trunks, all kind of things that these living ground covers provide that you just can't get out of, out of regular mulch. So that's something I wanted to kind of stop by and talk to you about. Still, still we use mulch. We use mulch in a lot of different areas. So this is not a video uh, uh, against mulch at all because we actually do use mulch. Um, we do like to try to mulch some of this. We're going to have to mulch soon again. There's a lot of applications that we do like to use mulch. Um, but as far as with our fruit trees, if I... I mean, if I had to do it all over again, I would have had comfrey by each one of these when I planted them. Uh, so it's beautiful. I mean, even if, and then the last thing is if you're running out of feed and you got chickens, the chickens will love these. So you even got a food source for some of the animals. I don't know about goats and cows, but I know for sure chickens, chickens just love these. So. Thank y'all for watching the GoFirma Network. I hope this was a was good. I hope it was informative. And I hope you learned something from today's video. Thank you for watching. And as always, grow, grow, grow. Peace.